Welcome everyone, today we're going to cover our next high level data structure, dictionaries. These are really straightforward from a user's perspective, but a bit more complicated from an implementation perspective. In this video, I'll cover the overall concept of the dictionary type data structure, and briefly talk about what differentiates some of the specific implementations. On a similar note, I'll only do one how it's made, because those implementation differences are fairly nuanced, and won't really be applicable unless you're working on very specific applications. I'm also going to cover the concept of hashing itself in another video, but for the sake of this video, just know that it's a way of creating roughly unique keys that allow you to take some value and instantly use it to locate some other data in your data structure. Now what is a dictionary? It's a way of mapping a word to its definition, right? This is known as a key value pair, where the key is the word and the value is the definition. If you want to know what the word video game means, you can open your dictionary, jump straight to it, and find its definition, an electronic game in which players control images on a video screen. Well, in the real world it's a little bit harder since we go to the V section, then VI, then VID until we find it, but that's because we aren't as good at storing a ton of info in our head all at once like a computer is. But even then, that's still infinitely faster than looking through the entire dictionary from the first page until we find it like we would have to do if we were using a list. Dictionaries and programming work under the same core concept. Computers use these keys to know exactly where the corresponding values are stored and can jump there automatically. It's kind of like an array or an array list where the index is the key and the stored object is the value at that location. Except dictionaries can use any value as the key and don't need to be in a specific order. You can still use numbers as keys if you want, but you can have keys 1, 50, and 9001 without having a 9002 length array that goes with it. In Java, there is technically a dictionary class, but it's extremely limited in its usage. It's subclassed by hash table and that's it. Instead, Java uses something called a map interface, which fills the role of this dictionary type. Ironically, hash table also implements this interface, so going forward, I'm only really gonna be using maps. Now, there are a lot of different ways to make a map. You don't need to use hashing, the only real requirement is that there's a unique key value pair, where the key only has one corresponding value. Hashing is usually used to put and get from the map as fast as possible. Your key gets hashed to a unique location in the computer's memory, and the corresponding value is stored there. That's it. Now, technically, there is an itty bitty chance that two things hash to the same value, in which case you might need further deduplication techniques by maybe storing the values in small little array buckets so you don't lose any of your values, but like our dictionary example above, you would still find the video game a heck of a lot faster if you start by jumping to V, then VI, then VID, and bam, now you find your actual word and the corresponding value. Now, let's take a break from the book stuff and get a little bit of coding in. We're going to once again start with our Pokedex, then we create our map to store our Pokemon, map string string pokedex map equals new hash map which is our most commonly used map type we're going to loop through our national decks for string pokemon colon national decks now our squiggly brackets next we want to split our pokemon into two parts the number and the name so we're going to do string square brackets for an array pokemon entry equals pokemon dot split and then a space in quotation marks, comma, and then the number two. This means we only split on that first space, so our final array is two pieces big. From here, we can go either direction, number map to Pokemon or Pokemon map to number. Well, our number to Pokemon is pretty much an array list after we account for the zero indexing, so we're gonna reverse it for our map. Let's do Pokedex map dot put Pokemon entry at space one, then Pokemon entry at index zero, now outside of our loop, we can get any Pokemon's number based on its name. So let's do two of them as an example. System.out.println, pokedexmap.get Bulbasaur, and system.out.println, pokedexmap.get Absol. And when we run it, we see that we get the numbers 1 and 359, which are their corresponding dex numbers. Now before I finish this video, I want to go into one little more interesting thing on maps. The difference between hash maps and hash table. The biggest thing you're probably going to care about is that hash maps allow you to use null as both a key and a value, but you can't do that in hash table. The other is more complicated. Hash tables are known as synchronized and hash maps aren't. 
Now, what that means is if you had multiple people reading and writing from the same data store, a map will just return whatever it gets whenever it's finished processing the request that came in. A table is going to maintain an order of when the request was made and perform them in that order, which means things might get backed up compared to a map. It's a little bit slower, possibly. I know it's not a really super obvious concept at face value, but I'll get around to this concept in a little bit more detail later, because it is important. That's it for now, so tune in next time to learn how hashing works in more detail, and then after that, the how it's made on dictionaries, where we build our first primitive hash map implementation. Like, subscribe, and comment below what you want to see next or topics you'd like to know more about. Mm -hmm.